All right, this is your golfing buddy, Bobby Lopez, and I've been getting badgered with this question from so many different friends. Lag, 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 lag. Never knew lag would be so powerful, or so prop or popular. Why would you want to lag at anything? <laughs> well, what they're really talking about, of course, is angular acceleration for all you engineers out there to know what the term is. What is it really? If we took ourselves and made a little clock here, See if I can move it. Ah, I can. And then we made another little clock here. And I guess I can move that one. Right. See? Okay. And here's us right here. There's a little mark in the center. See? Okay. This would be a wedge going around you in a circle. This would be a driver. So the driver has a bigger circumference to turn, but you as a person are not going to turn any further or any more or any different that you did from a wedge to a driver because you're the center point just like if we had a bunch of a marching band or some soldiers or something right here and they said column left march and they started marching this guy right here would mark time this one would march to here this one would march to there and this one would march to there well the one on the outside had to cover more territory so lag would be that he's lagging behind and he's back over here somewhere the rest of these, meaning the mark time person and the body, which is up close, is already getting to the point to finish their column left march and be in a straight line at impact, which is the tip of the left shoulder to the ball on a straight line. Then this guy would have to run like the Dickens in order to get there in time or have a bunch of demerits or have to run a lap. So running from here, you'd have to run so much faster than if you ran from there. So looking at that, we're looking at Ben Crenshaw. He's going to go back. And as he comes down, as you can see, he forms what looks like, sort of, the letter L. And he is pulling straight down, pulling straight down, without any lateral movement towards his left foot. His body, his head, and everything is on top of his right foot. Now, the comment I get from a lot of people, oh, I feel like I'm going to stick it in the ground. Yeah, it feels that way. But you got to suck it up and gut it out because what really happens is this left shoulder goes high. Now watch, we're going to go back to where we started. Now pay attention here because if you can do this, you can break 80. Now watch where his shoulder is going to be at the top of the back, at top of the downswing when he gets to the ball. It's much higher than it was when it started. So even though your right is going to seem lower, which is right there, because he got a little tilt, so his right shoulder is lower than his left shoulder. See, the left shoulder goes up to make up for the difference of the right shoulder going down. You're coming on an upward path, boom, and the club eventually pulls you to your left foot. So at impact, he has, and let me see if I can, don't know how accurate this is, but let's say a 45 degrees worth of tilt in his shoulders. Now, let's look at the person that has the most lag, arguably. Let's see what his tilt is at the shoulders. 39 degrees. 43 degrees there. Might be the way I'm measuring, but they're pretty close. Notice Sergio's head is way over on top of his right foot. His right shoulder goes down and under, but more importantly, his left shoulder is going, and watch, I'm gonna put a little dot here. I'm gonna put a little dot here. I'm going to put a little dot here, I'm going to put a little dot here, and his shoulder is going backwards because where it started was, and I will use yellow for that one, right here. So his shoulder is behind its original position at address, quite a bit behind right there, would you not agree? So, 
that's why it's so detrimental when you thrust towards your left foot even though you've heard from various sources that you need to transfer your weight your weight will be transferred after not before because the true circular motion of centrifugal force has to have a center point you have a bucket on a string and you're you're whipping the, the bucket around your hand your hand staying perfectly still and just just vibrating around if you moved your hand from left to right then the bucket would wobble and it would go slower because there's no center point hmm now let's look at another one here I'm showing you all these guys because you're gonna say you know Lopez I think you're nuts anyway well you're not the first but you're gonna see that these guys give it credibility what I'm saying I'm not making any of this up now watch what Nicholas is gonna do he's going to back up his left shoulder is going backwards look at the tilt in his shoulders 44 degrees now let me show you and I'm going to use some of our students and I'm not going to mention any names in order to protect the innocent look at this one right here now watch watch this watch what he's going to do see see the club open up its angle it had an L right here and the L is opening up which you would call casting now he's lost an awful lot of speed because that club head does not have to go very fast to get to the end position which is what tip of the left shoulder to the ball at impact that's what you're looking for but notice how his shoulders at impact barely have even 14 degrees worth of tilt so he's short by 30 degrees now Hang in here with me because I'm going to give you the exact drill to do to get this. All right? So I'm not just going to tell you you're, you're messed up. I'm going to tell you here's how you fix it. All right? Let's look at another one. Now watch this. It's going to go back. Whoop. Let's look at that surge. See? Here he is in a good place. Now what happens? Ah. So when he goes forward and passes that line... Now look at the block he gets rather than the rotating of the forearms like Nicholas you see right here. Look how Nicholas is backing up even more. Look at how much tilt he has. He probably, if that club wasn't pulling him outward because of the centrifugal force, he probably feels like he'd fall right on his back. That's what makes it so difficult for people to grasp was it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. None. Why would I want to fall backwards? I'm trying, especially us here as Americans, we played baseball all our life. Well, you hit it and you ran for first base. So everything went forward. Now it's going back. Here it is left-handed. See? As he goes forward, now the problem is he's got nowhere to go. See? Head goes forward. Uh-oh. Now what? Pull up, pull up quick at the last second. No good, and he gets scooped. We look at it from this side. Here's McElroy. Yeah, now watch. His left shoulder is going to go up, not down. His shoulders are tilted about 38 degrees. Huh? These shoulders right here are tilted about 27, 26 degrees. He's way short. So the lag that you seek, that you see in the arms and the hands, and you're trying to get it with your hips, it is in the shoulders. It is not in the hips. Hmm? It's in the shoulder tilt. That's what has to do it. So, how are you going to fix that? I've got just the drill, and I'm going to attach it. And I want you to keep in mind that I have lost 26 pounds since I did this video. <laughs> so when you laugh at how fat I am, what do you care? You just want the drill to work. You've got to get your shoulder to go 
up and the right shoulder down. You will feel like you're going to hit the ball straight up in the air. And that is one of the reasons why all these golf clubs, they call game improved the clubs and stuff, and they got all this weight on the bottom of the sole, and the sole is so big and around, which makes it difficult for you to hit off a of bent grass, makes it difficult for you to hit off a tight line, all that other kind of stuff. Who cares? They want you to hit the ball up in the air nice and high, like the pros do. Well, the pros are putting weight on the top of their club, trying to get the club to stay down. That's why they're hitting blades. Here, the amateurs got all the weight on the bottom of the club trying to get the ball up in the air. Why? Because your shoulders are so level. If your shoulders were more steep, the ball would go straight up in the air. It wouldn't have any problem. Hmm? Let me see if I can find you another one. Look at Rieger. He's the longest hitter on the senior tour. About. I guess Kenny Perry might be the longest one. Now watch. See? His shoulders are... 37 degrees. I'm not saying they have to be 40, they have to be 43, they gotta be 35. They gotta be a heck of a lot more than 14. Hmm? Now here's another fine young man. Okay, now he tries to get here, and then what happens to him? Watch. Spin a Rooney, see? Look at the angle disappear. See the angle disappear. If we look at Sergio, watch his angle come down. Why? Because his chest is still facing this way. If you look at this young man, his chest is facing the ball already, and the club's not even there yet. That's why Nicholas says that his key was I felt like I had to get the club to the ball before the buttons in my shirt got there. And this young man, the buttons on the shirt won the race, not the golf club. So you've got to feel like your body is staying right here. There's no way to keep it perfectly still. It ain't going to happen. But your body is the one marking time in the column left march. Pull down, pull down, pull down, pull down, and get that club to the ball before your stomach or your chest gets there. That's the trick. That's the idea of the two o'clock drill. The problem with the two o'clock drill, or there's not a problem with it, two o'clock meaning, and I'm going to attach both drills to this. Here's 12 o'clock straight ahead, here's two o'clock. Right? You keep your eyes at two o'clock, and that should keep your chest from turning, and you pull down, you pull down, rotate your forearms over, pull down, pull down, rotate your forearms over, pull down, 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 and rotate your forearms over. You do that about a billion times. That's okay, but if you move even one iota this way, you're never going to get that right shoulder up and the left shoulder down. See? See? Look at his shoulder go back. He has to go back. So not only are you going to pull down on the two o'clock drill, but you've got to feel literally like you're going backwards. And that's what will give you the feeling like you're hitting the ball straight up in the air. Right shoulder has to go under, the left shoulder has to go up. And the turn and tilt drill is going to do that for you. So I'm going to attach two drills, the two o'clock drill and the turn and tilt drill. If there's one thing, I, look, I look at these stupid videos all day long. If there's one thing that you could point out, if somebody walked up to me and they said, what's the one thing that you see in all the amateur players that they don't have, that the pros have? This is it right here. This is it. It's one of the things that separates the sheep from the goats as far as the golf swing is concerned. Now we've got, you know, swing preparation, pre-shot routine, blah, 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 the short came all again. Well, there's a lot of stuff going on too. But when it comes to the golf swing, if you can grasp this, you can start hitting the ball really nice with a nice little draw. Then you say, darn, this game is as hard as it seemed now that I can hit the ball somewhere near where I thought I was supposed to put it in the first place. And it makes the game a whole lot more fun. So I'm going to put these two drills. I'm going to put the 2 o'clock drill and the turn and tilt drill. And you do those drills until your nose bleeds. And anytime you want, take a video of yourself doing them, send it to me. Bobby Lopez at QuickFixGolf.com. No charge. Just send me a quick video of you doing the drill and you hitting the ball. All right? And those drills are going to start playing 
right now.